Adobe Illustrator is a program used by both artists and graphic designers to create vector images. Vector images are images that can be scaled up and down infinitely without ever losing quality. They are typically used to create illustrations, charts, graphs, logos, diagrams, cartoons of real photographs, and more. While Illustrator may be difficult to understand initially, the final product will be well worth the learning curve. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the Illustrator workspace, navigation, and some basic tools. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to create an abstract design made of geometric shapes and lines. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and open up uh, Adobe Illustrator, and it's going to take you to a page which looks like this. Um, you can go ahead and click on New. And here you're going to get a whole bunch of different options, starting with Recent and Saved. Um, images for print or animation. Um, click on one of those. A bunch of different options. I'm going to go ahead and click create and this is what the workspace looks like. This is called an artboard. So you can really draw anywhere on the screen including the gray area on the outside um, which is kind of a nice feature. If you look at the toolbars, it's pretty similar to Photoshop. Um, you got kind of the same icons, but there's um, and they all of them have the little arrows on the selection menu to indicate there's more tools there. Down here is our color choosers. Um, the first one is the fill color, and then the second one is called the stroke, which is the outline. Over here on the right panel are a bunch of different menus such as color and you've got gradients and brushes. And we've got a layers panel here as well, just like in Photoshop, where it's showing you what's all on your layers. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the shape tool and I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. Just start out simple here. And I'm going to click and draw and drag and try to draw a circle or an ellipse. Uh, just like in Photoshop, if you hold the shift key down, it will maintain proportions and draw a perfect circle. Uh, so I did not hold shift down. If we go to our chooser here, color chooser, if I double click, remember that no sign means there's nothing there. Um, and then the bottom one is called the stroke, that's the outline. Uh, I can use my arrow, black arrow tool and um, that's how I can select the object and move it or transform it. So it's called the selection tool. So if I click and drag, you're going to notice that I can move this around now. I can also hover over the corner and I can make it diagonal, rotate it, can also click on some of these points and drag it to resize it or scale it. So if we double click here on the fill color and the object is selected, I want to change it to, let's say, a pink color. Click OK and there it is, it's pink. And there's a stroke, there's a black stroke around it um, and it's at one point which is really tiny. It's a really thin black outline which is the stroke. I can change that thickness to make it larger or smaller just by adjusting the stroke menu. We can go ahead and select our object again. Again, we can move it, we can rotate it, we can transform it. I'm going to show you this tool. It's called the Direct Selection Tool. So it's the white arrow. And if I select the object, you notice there's these points and these bars that are on here. I can now manipulate those points to reshape the object, reshape the curves. You here on the bottom one, I can drag it out. And if we mess with these bars here, um, we can change the angle of the curve. We can make it go in or make it go out. These are called Bezier curves. Pretty fancy name. But just by tugging on these um, 
You can change the shape. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead and grab another shape here. Maybe we'll try a rectangle or a rounded rectangle. And we'll go ahead and draw that out. And you're going to notice that it's using the same colors that I had before. And to, to change that, all you got to do is simply click the color and change it. You're going to notice that the purple rectangle is in front of the sort of pink tornado shape. Uh, one thing you can do is you can go up to Object. And this is somewhere you'll go quite frequently to manipulate objects. Um, you, there's an arrange menu where you can say bring to front, send backward, send to back. So I just want to send it backward one level. So now notice that it's behind the tornado shape now. I can still grab it and move it if I want to, but it's behind the pink shape. It's a kind of a nice little feature. Instead of messing with layers, you can just do that on the same layer. So I want to move this up here and uh, um, adjust the size a little bit just so they're overlapping. And I want to show you another cool thing. If I want to select both of these together, all you got to do is just draw a rectangle around what you want to select and it will select both objects. And you can move them together. It's pretty nifty just using the selection tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these and I'm going to go up to the window here and there's a whole bunch of different windows that we can have. The one I'm looking for is called the Pathfinder and this is what it looks like. It's a nice tool to use to manipulate two shapes and you've got shape modes and pathfinders. The first one here, um, and normally if you hover over this it will tell you what it does but for some reason mine's not working. But if you click it, notice how both shapes were combined to form one shape. I'm going to go undo add. So that was called add. So it's adding to the front. This one here, I'm going to go ahead and click it. And notice that it took away just the front object but left what was in the back with a cutout. So that's going to be called subtract. I'm going to undo that. Go to the next one here and it looks like something's going to happen with the center shape. So we click on that, it just selected, just shows what the center of the two overlapping objects is. And the last one looks like the center is going to be completely cut out. And there it is. So that's a way to manipulate two overlapping shapes. And then down below we've got uh, the Pathfinder. Um, same sort of thing where um, it's combining images, so you can edit them. If I use my direct selection tool, I can click on the individual pieces now and move those around. So it's, it's basically making it into a bunch of different paths. Go ahead and undo that. And undo divide. You can also hit Command Z to undo instead of going up to the edit button every time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select both these again and let's see what the other ones do here. Ooh, that one took the stroke off and if I use my direct selection tool I can now move the individual pieces. That's kind of nifty. That's called trim. This one appears that it did almost the exact same thing. I'm not sure what um, merge merge did there. This is a nice tool just to play around with, just to see what each thing does. Whether you apply them uh, or not, it's completely up to you. But it's just nice to see what some of the basic tools are within the program. Looks like this one you can edit just 
simple paths where they intersect. And we'll try the last one here. What does that do? Ooh, took away the back shape. Undo minus back. That's what that one's called. So that's the Pathfinder tool. I'm going to go ahead and add another shape here. Let's try a hexagon here. And we'll change the color. And let's do a green or something. Move that down here. And then let's move that to the back. So we've got a whole bunch of things here. We'll go ahead and go up to Object and Arrange and Send to Back. And it sends it way to the back. So we got three shapes overlapping each other. We're forming a color scheme here. So I've got a purple and a pink and I've got a green shape. And one of the nice little menus here is the color guide. And you're going to notice that it's got the object I have selected here. Um, if I click on that, it's giving me all the tints and shades of that pink color. There's a menu here where you can show warm, cool, show vivid, muted. These are all different kinds of color schemes um, that designers use. Color themes, uh, that's not available right now. Um, if I click this arrow here, you're going to notice that it says it's got analogous, it's got complements, it's got monochromatic, triads, tetrads, high contrast. There's a whole bunch of different color schemes um, that you can use. And this is, comes in really handy when you're creating a design um, because you want to use colors that are related to each other, that are pleasing to the eye. I like monochromatic colors, which is tints and shades of one color. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and I want to go through and change uh, the colors of my shape so that they are form, forming a monochromatic color scheme. So I've got light and dark versions of pink. Well, again, that's a monochromatic color scheme. I'm going to go ahead and add a background here. So notice that our background's white. We have to, in order to make a background, we have to draw a shape. So I just drew a large rectangle, and you guessed it, I'm going to send it all the way to the back. So now it's our background color. Again, I can change it. I want this to fit within the monochromatic scheme. And find something where the design sort of stands out against the background. Now this does have a stroke on it. I don't want a stroke around the background, so I'm going to, have to go ahead and turn that off with that no sign there. So now we don't have a stroke around it. Again, all the shapes don't really like the black outline, so I'm just doing a no stroke. I want to zoom in and show you, um, this is the difference between uh, vector and raster images. So if I zoom in here, and move this up and keep zooming in. You're going to notice that the image does not lose quality. There are no pixels here. Um, it's not jagged. It's just nice and clean and smooth. That's the difference between vector and raster. Vectors can be enlarged uh, infinitely without blurring. So this is one reason why graphic designers use this tool is because they don't lose image quality. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the tornado shape here, and you're going to notice that there's the fill color, there's the no sign, and then where it doesn't fill. And then there's also a gradient, which is right here. If you click on gradient, it's going to put a gradient from dark to light over top of the shape. And over here on the right is also your gradient menu. You can change the type of gradient, whether it's linear or radial. Um, to change the color, you just, like in Photoshop, you double click on the little tabs and you can change your gradient color. 
That doesn't look like much of a gradient. Neither does that one. A little better. You can add, uh, slide your gradient. So if you want it to be more of a certain color than the other, you can drag it. You can also drag a new color into it by adding a new tab there. Change the length of the colors within the gradient by dragging the little diamonds. Again, linear or radial. Radial, I always think, radiates out from the center. Doesn't look very good. I like linear. Over here on the left uh, is the gradient tool, and this is showing you the length of the gradient that's been added onto your shape. This is edit, an edit, editable bar. So again, I can drag the colors. I can also use this tool, I can rotate it. Rotate the angle of the gradient. I can redraw it just by clicking and dragging, and that will give me some different gradient angles as well. If I draw it large or short, it's going to give me a different style. So this is completely adjustable. So that's how you add a gradient to a shape. I'm going to go ahead and show you some other features of the shape tool. I'm just going to grab a rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a real thin vertical uh, rectangle that's filled with blue. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to make it just a little bit thicker. So I've got two lines here. I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to click on one of them. I'm going to hold shift down and I'm going to select the other one so that they're both selected at the same time. We're going to go up to object and all the way down to blend. And we're going to go to blend options. And here's where you're going to be able to create a blend of lines. You can do smooth colors, steps, distance. We're going to go ahead and go with steps. You can change the number of steps. Let's try 10, and we're just going to do the regular orientation and click OK. Now, nothing happened. So you're going to go, have to go back up to Object Blend, now click Make, and you're going to notice that it created a blend um, from thin to thick. It's kind of a neat design feature. You can click on that. Oops. You can click on it, and you can move it. And you can also adjust it, stretch it, skew it, rotate it. I want to go ahead and send this backward behind the tornado shape there. That's called a blend. You can also do a blend with the brush tool. So we're going to go ahead and do paintbrush. I want to change the color. Let's try some kind of a blue here. Maybe a lighter blue. And I'm going to go ahead and draw sort of a wavy, curvy line. And we'll go ahead and do it over here on the right as well. And again, we're going to use our selection tool. We're going to select the first line, hold shift down, and select the second line. Object down to blend, blend options. And let's change this to 20 and OK. Back up to object down to blend and then make. Ooh, look at that. Nice and fancy. Got sort of a wave look and feel here. Again, I can edit this, I can stretch it, rotate it. going to 
go ahead and send it backward just so that it's behind the tornado shape. So I want to show you the layers panel and how effective this is. So you're going to see this little arrow here on layer one. We've got all of these things on layer one. And just like in Photoshop, there's an eyeball. If I click on it, it turns it off. Uh, click it back on, it comes back on. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of little things that are on top of each other and it's hard to select them. So you see this little circle over here. If you click the little circle, it's going to select that part of the layer, which is kind of a handy feature when you have a whole bunch of things that are on top of each other. Um, and you're going to notice that it's going to go through and select when you click on that circle which shape it is. Uh, on our blends we have two lines so it's showing you those two lines why there's a little arrow under there. And we can also, um, whoops, We can also create new layers, just like in Photoshop. So it's putting a new layer on top here. I want to go ahead and put a little lock here, so that way the layer one is locked. I don't have to edit it. So I can draw on top of it, and it's not going to hurt anything below it because it's locked. OK, now I'm going to turn that off because I didn't like those squiggly lines. You're going to notice if I select layer one here and it's locked, I can't do anything. I can't use a brush. I can't draw on it. Um, there's like a no sign here. so. If you ever see that, it means your layer is locked. You want to make sure that it's unlocked in order to edit it. And now it's unlocked, I can work on it. Okay, I want to show you one more thing using the blend tool and a clipping mask. This is kind of a neat, uh, neat trick. get this thing situated here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to go ahead and change the color and just do black. And lines uh going to notice that lines can't be filled but rather they're strokes so you have to change the stroke thickness in order to make the line appear so I'm going to do one here that's about four point and then we're going to draw another line over here and again you can hold shift down if you want to keep it straight and I'm going to change this to uh, a little bit thicker let's go 16 so again I'm going to select the first line hold shift and click the second line and we're going to go to object and down to blend and blend options and let's make that one 20 and then go object blend and make now we got this staggered looks like sort of blinds or something go ahead and move it I want to show you how we can put this pattern on a shape I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and I want this to be a circle so I'm going to hold shift down, click and hold shift, make it about the size of the blend there and we can go ahead and change the color, a little blue, and click OK. So we've got a blue circle on top of the blend here. I'm going to use my regular selection tool I'm selecting just, I'm selecting the circle and the, the blend, and I'm going to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. And now what you see here is the top object has cut out the blend into a circular shape. It's called a clipping mask. So what if I want to add color in there? I don't want it to just be black. I want to actually make it a colorful circle so the purple lines in between the black lines are going to be in color. So we can go to our layers panel here and make sure that we're locking everything. 
lock in the background because it keeps moving on me. And I'm just using the white direct selection tool. I'm just clicking on just the circle. See how the circle is selected? And you can use the, there we go. So just the circle is now selected. I can now go to the fill color. And when I change the color of it, click OK, it should fill with blue. So now we have a blue and black striped circle. Using the regular selection tool, I can now drag this, I can rotate it, I can enlarge it. That's kind of a neat little abstract effect that you can use within your abstract design. So you're going to create an abstract design using the basic tools in Illustrator. Here are a few examples of some student work. Image quality is kind of poor because they are printed out. Lots of gradients, lots of geometric shapes, lots of blends, lots of movement. Have fun with it.